Hi, this is Josh Rodriguez, and today we are going to talk about the role of women in both the detective genres and Shakespeare quote-unquote genres uh, seen throughout the ages. Uh, detective mainly more so with the American um, detective genre, with some looking at the root of it with Murders in the Rue Morgue. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at Blade Runner, Veronica Mars, Farewell My Lovely, and then uh, Murders in the Rue Morgue. And then on the Shakespeare side, we're going to be looking at Romeo and Juliet, Twelfth Night, and Hamlet. Uh, so we're going to be starting with Detective. Now, if you see this little mad dude, then you should know where my initial thoughts lie on how women are portrayed in this story. Oh, what is happening? Come back here. Hey, there we go. Okay, uh, wrong button. There we go. All right, today we're going to start out with, here's Decker. Hi, I'm Decker. I'm going to go kill some people. And basically, the way I see women portrayed in Blade Runner, uh, the original, uh, it seems to be mainly that women are treated as objects, seductors, and sirens. Because there's this one who's just basically like, I'm flexible, and I'm going to make you... <laughs> then there's Rachel, um, who he's pretty much like, Hey, uh, I don't want to kill you. Do you want to bone me? And she's like, whatever. Uh, and then... Oh, come on, little thingy. And then there's this one who's... We literally see her boobs, and there's no sugarcoating that part. Uh, and she's basically a stripper, which, not barking on the uh, sex workers, if you're a sex worker, go for you. Um good for you I mean regardless they're see still treating her as an object in the movie and that's not cool what hence the little dude right here uh, next and that seems to be pretty typical in a lot of detective genres unfortunately uh, however let me get rid of this little mad dude and replace it with little happy dude because next we're gonna talk about Veronica Mars. So I've only seen the pilot, unfortunately. I need to get on watching that show, but I've seen way too many shows, and I need to catch up on a lot of them. Uh, but there are only a few uh, women that are portrayed in Veronica Mars, and the main ones are Veronica here and her friend who gets killed, Dead. And a big thing about Veronica Mars is... Women are mainly portrayed as oppressed, violated, murdered, cunning, and more than meets the eye. Which I think, although I cannot speak for women entirely because I am a dude, I believe that they portray women in probably the best, most accurately flattering way possible. Because Veronica, she doesn't take any BS, um, and she is strong, it stands up for herself, but she's still treated as a lesser person because she's a woman, which sucks, and let's all say F the patriarchy. Um, and there's even a part where she is violated after being drugged at a high school party, uh, which is very bad, but sadly very common. And I think they did a good job just showing that women are just as capable as men in this one. So that is a great thing for the detective genre to have Veronica Mars. Uh, Unfortunately, we're going to go back to the little mad dude with the next one, and that is with Farewell My Lovely. Here's old ass Philip. I don't know why they made him so mad in the movie. Now, I actually haven't seen the movie. I just pulled these pictures off of the um, internet to where I think thought that would be a good representation of each character. So, in Farewell My Lovely, women, from what I've been able to tell, are mainly portrayed as deceivers manipulators, manipulated, seductors, and motherly. Uh, you can see portraits like this with um, Velma slash Mrs. Gale, or Grail, I can't remember exactly. Uh, Jesse, who's just drunk off her ass. And uh, this is supposed to be Anna, but uh, what's her last name again? Rio? Uh, no, 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 I'm looking at it right here. It is Anna R Riordan. I can't pronounce it right. I couldn't find a picture of her, so this is... Botex doctor Anna Riordan. Uh, didn't get her permission for this, but hey. And so the detective here is pretty much going from 
person to person, just like you getting the information from him. He is a genuine person from what I read. Um, but just the writer sees uh, Velma as just like the conniving one, the manipulating one, the seductress, and then she's drunk. Uh, and she's just, hey, I'm going to take care of you and be mother-like. Um, which doesn't really give a lot of three-dimensional characteristics to women and therefore angry face. Moving on. Uh, oh, I'm at five minutes. This is supposed to only be two, uh, two to four minutes. Oh, well. Uh, going over the next one, let's talk about Murders in the Rue Morgue, which barely feature women because a gorilla goes and kills them. And pretty much portrayed it as having no chance whatsoever. Uh, King Louis just went in and then, bam, dead. All right, let's move on to, hold up, let me get rid of Mad Little Dude, because not all of Shakespeare is uh, going to make me angry. So moving on to Shakespeare. Let's start with Romeo and Juliet. With Romeo down there, unfortunately, I have to rate this with a little mad dude. Because, from what I've seen of Romeo and Juliet, it treats women more so, or it portrays them in the lower than men status, quote unquote, uh, desperate, passionate, and emotional. Um, and you can see that with, oh wait, no, wrong one. Moving up, moving on up. Uh, you can see that with how Julia is portrayed. Also, if you look right here, yes, every woman I've shown so far is white. So what the hell? Let's change that. Uh, and then you have the nurse, uh, Lady Capulet, Lady Montague. Uh, and yeah, Juliet, Juliet is probably the most powerful woman woman in all of this play. Um, but Shakespeare still writes her as that stereotype of just going for things, be not thinking on a mo uh, logic, which is not true um, of most women, and just acting on emotions, and that's not really cool. Uh, so that is why I gave it a mad little dude. Uh, moving on. Gotta go up. Now this next one is a little happy dude. Because. Uh, next we're going to be talking about Twelfth Night. Uh, and it is probably my favorite Shakespeare play. I ended up doing this play over a few summers ago. when it was a ton of fun. I got to play Sir Andrew. I forgot to attach the picture on here. But oh well. Uh, so we have Viola, who here is portrayed, uh, disguising herself as her twin brother, Sebastian, who, and we also have Olivia and, uh, Maria, and in the production I had, I was in, they had Malvolio as, uh, played by a woman, they also had the Jester played by a woman, um, so when I thought about it, it was down to just these three roles, which, come on, we gotta add more roles for women, but... The thing about Twelfth Night is the women in this are smart, clever, uh, and in charge of their fate. Sometimes, in terms of uh, Viola and Olivia, their actions seem to be driven by love and love alone, which, not a good portrayal of women because there's more to that, but out of all of Shakespeare's that I've seen, which are only four plays, unfortunately, uh, this tends to be the one that gives them the best representation and the best character, the best individuality. Um, especially with the cleverness of Maria and working with Sir Toby to trick the hell out of Sir Andrew, uh, which was a lot of fun to play. And then Viola just being able to trick Olivia and just be underground and working timelessly to just get her plans in motion. I thought it was a really good portrayal of women and was very fair to them. All right. And unfortunately, I love this next play, but I'm going to have to give it a little mad dude. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, Hamlet. So, there's only really two main women characters in this play, which, come on, we got to have more. There is uh, Queen Gertrude and Ophelia. Uh, Queen Gertrude, well, to, what was I going to say? To paraphrase a lot of what it seems that Shakespeare is portraying of women. It seems that Shakespeare is portraying them as really going through with the flow, uh, being an accessory for men and individuals that must be loved. Um, I argue that last part because with uh, Queen Gertrude marrying off to uh, the brother so quickly, and then Ophelia 
not being able to have Hamlet just go ahead and going like, hey, I'm going downtown. I'm dead. Um, so yeah, that pretty much sums that up. And bottom line, I would like to say, out of all these, where are the people of color? For real. Uh, that is more of a commentary on a lot of things in Hollywood that pissed me off, but regardless, let's make that better. Anyway, not to get too off track, uh, to summarize it up, I think almost all the time in detective genres and Shakespeare, women are not portrayed well. Um, I think out of all of these, Veronica Mars wins for being the most uh, legit for representing women, and I think that's really cool. Um, but I would like to finish this show by telling you that today's episode was brought to you by the letter F. For F the patriarchy. Yep. All right, folks. I hope you have a good rest of your time, and sorry I went too long.